Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And before I do anything else, I'm going to correct a little mistake I made. You see, the um, uh, stock-like parts pack that I uh, have included in this series isn't integrated into this tech tree, and it turns out that I've been using the RCS from that pack when really I hadn't unlocked the technology for RCS yet. So, before I do anything else, here's the technology for RCS. Oop, there we are. And so let me just research it so I can uh, do things honestly there. So there we go. We've got RCS. So what's this one? More RCS. Okay. Well, um, so we also have reaction wheels now, although admittedly weak ones. You'll notice the 0.25 torque there. But, uh, but that should be enough for a, a reasonably sized probe, so no problems. And now uh, that I spend it on that, uh, still our goal is to unlock the command pod so that we can send Kerbals up. Alright, so that's my uh, goal for uh, today, and I hope to get those 500 signs to do that. But in order to do that, we need to send a sample return mission up into high, high orbit. So let's go to VAB and see what we can do about that. So here's the high toss one that we sent up before, and looking at its delta V, the question is how we can optimize this. And we need to optimize it in such a way as we could... we can bring back down the sample. Now, we don't need the thermometers anymore. Those were useless. And... I guess we could still bring graviolis back down, but let's see how it works. I'm gonna put the heat shield on the pod itself so that we can still have the rocket at the bottom. So let's pull this down. And what's the smallest heat shield I could use that could credibly... I guess that could work if we uh, dump the graviolis and just focus on returning the sample. Maybe this is big enough. Maintaining communication is going to be tricky though. And we need to release the parachutes. And this one will snap off. Huh. Yeah, this one will probably snap off in the atmosphere before we can pop the parachutes. Let's get the parachutes on first. Um, let's see. Okay, let's get four of these. I guess we don't strictly need four. How much do they weigh? 0.01? Uh, probably better just to have four just in case. I mean, theoretically, this is a fine probe, except for the communication issue. This will poke out, any way you look at it. Um, even if I put it on top, it's going to poke out. This it pokes out. What's its heat tolerance? Not good. Uh, it's huge, really. This one wouldn't uh, snap under pressure, and we could put it on top, but it's so heavy that's not uh, not reasonable. Huh. And this one is... oh, well, this one's huge, too. Well, you know, well, I can't keep it open and have it there, so that's not, not an option. Hmm. Well, let me have just two parachutes. Let's see about this. And try and fit that one on top. Nope, it doesn't want to uh, let me put it there. Okay. Uh, that's just not going to work with anything, is it? <laughs> oh no. See, this is the problem I've had, so... Hmm... Well, let's get a decoupler on. Well... Huh... So much trouble. I think it's this reaction wheel. Okay, well, technically the... I don't even know if I have the right decoupler for this situation. Is this the one? Okay, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, how am I going to communicate with it? 
hope that this doesn't snap off because it's on the top instead of on the side. If it was on the side, it would definitely snap off, right? Because uh, it's feeling all the pressure from the air resistance. But maybe, just maybe, if it's on the top, it'll stick there because it won't actually feel the pressure because it's being shielded by, well, the heat shield. There's a chance... I guess we could also take a chance and just have this stick out of the heat shield. Not likely to survive though. Hmm... Well, let's not uh, wave around. Let's give this a go. Can we... No, the, the gravioli stick out too much. Alright. Uh, probably if we're gonna fail, let's fail quickly. Now, we've got reaction wheel. So let's actually dump the entire... Oh, that's a small reaction wheel. Let's put it with the probe then. Oh, yeah, well, the probe doesn't even have electric, electric charge right now. We need electric charge, otherwise we won't be able to talk with the probe, the antenna won't work. Um, well, we've created some space by only having two parachutes. Let's make sure they're centered. And then we need some battery power. How fat is this? Oh, that's really fat. That'll stick out like crazy. Oh, no. I need inline batteries. We don't have inline batteries yet. Hmm. Well, maybe these two will fit on the side. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they don't... Well, parachutes love to not stay kosher when heat is around. But maybe this will be what we have to try. And just in case, let's have four of them then. Because uh, the, there's... D depending on how we're, we might be tilted going into the atmosphere, one of them might uh, suffer from that. So some redundancy is called for. Now, uh, that's huge. That's huge. But maybe we can fit one on top? Okay, seems like the plan. Staging needs to be fixed. Don't see a reason why I can't center these. And let's go with angle snap. Oh, uh, yeah, somebody said, uh, why do I keep going over there? It's habit. I, I always go over there by habit. I think uh, I move my mouse over there to adjust the symmetry before I can think to just press uh, X or C. So, yeah. Anyway, even though I have my hand over the X and C buttons. Uh, Alright, so we've got a reaction wheel. And we've probably got enough electric charge to manage the reaction wheel. I, I guess it'll be good to slap on a single solar panel on the top probe. Just for for the sake of maintaining electric charge somehow. Oh, that's... <laughs> even the... even the. Uh, I, th I think this, this battery should have more than enough electric charge, so I'm, I'm not gonna go there. Now, why do we have this problem where... Oh, uh... Yeah, we've got all sorts of staging problems. That's... that's... okay. This one here... This one is the heat shield. It should really go here. And... This should go here. Ah, there we go. Now we've got a stage there. What I'm thinking of doing is actually trying to get this into... into a geostationary orbit. Uh, uh, we're gonna bring it back down, of course, but... or, or at least aim for that, not complete the burn to geostationary orbit, just to see if I could theoretically do it. And then later on, uh, prepare a geostationary satellite. Now, we don't have any reaction control right now. And I'm gonna try this with just a reaction wheel. So let me empty the tank of uh, hydrazine. 
so we're not going to have any hydrazine. We're just going to stick with uh, the raw fuel for the rocket, even though the rocket doesn't have any. Well, even though the rocket sucks. Um, yeah, let's go with that and try this out. Seems like a long shot. Oh, I was wrong. Okay. Uh, okay, let me press X just for the sake of sanity. Um, oh, it's done something weird with my staging again. These are probably going to go down here. Okay, that looks fine. Alright, so second thing is the optimization of the base stage. Now, right now we have a sea level thrust of 0.1, and that's... Oh, I think I did something wrong. And that's okay, but perhaps we're losing too much uh, to gravity in that case. There's a lot of gravity loss. Um, so, we could reduce the base stage and increase... Uh, how long can we make this whole thing? Well, really, we can make this about an 11 minute burn if we really wanted to, but let's let's not go whole hog there. It's alright to extend the stage, the second stage, perhaps to about here. Let's see, the... yeah, actually, uh, if I'm thinking about the Saturn V and how it goes, uh, it had a substantial burn. Uh, it would have had a probably something about this long. However, it's all about the thrust of the base rocket here, and I don't know if it could. Let, let let's try a little bit more conservative for this this try. Let's say seven minutes and fifteen seconds up here. Okay, and we'll keep that consistent and reduce this stage so that the sea level thrust to weight ratio is 1.16 and we'll go well actually let's look go for around three minutes I like using burn time more than more than anything else anyway so alright so a three minute burn here which gives us still a sea level thrust to weight ratio of 1.16 and we'll see how that works out. And then uh, I'll do testing while trying to launch payloads. So this is going to be high toss 3. Uh, 2, sorry. Okay, already jumping to 3. We don't really have a stage there. Yeah, everything looks good. I just thought up another configuration. In theory, we could add a small stage on the probe to deorbit it and and keep the rest of this in orbit as just a communication thing it's an idea alright uh, without further ado let's go out to launch pad and see if this whole thing with just having that one antenna on the top works whether that will snap off and re-entry or not alright so off we go Okay, here we are on the launch pad. Let's hope I've done everything right. There's this. <laughs> There's always something. Alright, uh, SAS is on. Throttle is up. We are at 64.6 .6 tons, which is not bad for a sample return probe to high, high orbit. And uh, I see no reason not to launch. Now if I'm really going to test what thrust to weight ratio at sea level is going to be the best, I really need to do the turns pretty consistently. Um, so I'm looking at this flight computer thing. Okay, so it has an execute button. So now we're at pitch, heading, roll. Okay, so let's say I uh, set let, let's say I set 85 and execute at 1000. It doesn't do anything. Okay, so I definitely need to uh, learn how to use this. <laughs> uh, 
turn it off also. So. Okay, well let me let me actually do my stuff because I, I clearly don't know how to use that. It's I mean obviously uh, I'm used to the smart ass system with MechJeb, and there I would just do what I just did. Zero seconds. So does that mean I can time the activity? I don't know. Yeah, so I'll just look up how to use this. Uh, this is the computer that comes with uh, um, the what you call remote tech, remote tech two. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Not yet, not that far yet. So I figure we'll just stick to 30 degrees for a while. Um, at 30 degrees, 25% of your thrust is uh, going downward and 75 is going horizontally. That doesn't mean that 75% uh, of your net resulting velocity is going horizontally because there's still drag and gravity and all that stuff. Okay, for staging. Uh oh. Psh. How did I? Did I not save the one that had the uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer? Yeah, I guess not. Okay, all right. Well, this is just gonna go back to the surface. All right, so back to the VAB. Uh, I'll revert flight. Let's let's just uh, get that liquid fuel and oxidizer for ignition in. So somehow I failed to save the one that had the liquid fuel and oxidizer even though I fixed that problem. So let's just do that. And let's have for three ignitions. And that's because we might need to ignite again when we are trying to do uh, geo uh, geostationary orbit. We need to ignite at apoapsis perhaps. Uh, that's a possibility that I'm just gonna plan for here. So three ignitions. Uh, the actual engine can ignite 40 times, so... It's just a matter of not carrying extra weight. Okay. While we're in here, let me just make sure that... Uh, I got this on the right node. Yes, I did. Okay, good. And let me press X to change symmetry, yes. Must remember to do that properly. And now we've got those on the wrong place. Okay, let's try this again. Perhaps with a better flight profile since I was messing around with that flight computer. Alright, now save, launch. Okay, here we go again. Throttle is up, SAS on, and launch. Okay, staging. And staging is good this time. And we've got a long burn ahead of us. I think we can ditch the payload shroud. Uh, oh, right, but we can't ditch it entirely, otherwise there are issues. Uh, let me just, well, yeah, let me just in one side so that I can see me extend the antenna. And that's good. They've got some overheating on this stage. So, we're aiming for an apoapsis of 35,786 kilometers. And at that point, I will attempt to shut down 
the engine and then restart at Apoapsis, though that might be a tricky business because at that point we might not be able to... Um, well, there's also an electric charge problem because we're going to have all these things here, but well, we might not have fuel stability. And without any uh, RCS we can't... well, I guess we could try and use the... but the... Um, uh, we can try spinning it and use uh, centrifugal force as as it is, but um, but our reaction wheel might not be uh, vigorous enough to uh, to pull it around like that. We'll see. Let me just make sure we really are hitting 30 degrees as we continue around the planet. Of course, that changes. Actually, on a trajectory like this, I could probably make this rocket arbitrarily... Uh, I could put a, overload this second stage quite a lot. Because it's not like we're going to re reach our apoapsis at all by the time we... by the time we uh, run out of the stage. But then there is there is Oberf effect questions. Uh, the faster we burn the stage, the more it's within the gravity well of uh, Kerbin slash Earth. And the further we're in the gravity well, I mean, you can see we're we're way high now already. Uh, the deeper we burned within the gravity well, the more benefit we get from the Oberth effect. Unfortunately, I I'm not too sure how to calculate that all. Well, okay, I I do know the equations to calculate all that out, but I I probably I'm probably just gonna wing it here. Maybe, maybe I should calculate it sometime. See how long the burn should be if I want to. Well, I mean, see, it's simpler with something like the Saturn V, which is just going to be putting itself into a 200 kilometer uh, circular orbit. But once you put the apoapsis out this far, I mean, aiming for geostationary, it's a totally different situation. I can understand why they uh, bring it into orbit first and then transfer to geostationary. Let's check on our connection situation. Bermuda, okay, well, Bermuda is a safe one. And it'll be Auroral Valley after that. Okay. Oh, well, uh, we'll still be under Bermuda slash. Well, the, but unfortunately, they're going to their periapsis, so it's going to drop off. But we're going to end up pretty high, so it'll be all right. I think we can probably go to 25 here. Judging from the previous time, it looks like we were maintaining connection pretty well. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I want to get the apoapsis in the right place. And then once we've got the apoapsis in the right place, I want to make the plot for uh, geostationary and see how much delta V that would take and check it against my total delta V here. And based on that, I'll be able to figure out whether I could put something of this size into uh, geostationary orbit. And that would be a very interesting thing to know. Okay, no, our uh, periapsis is going up faster than our apoapsis. That's not going to be good. Okay, very good. Alright, uh, staging then. Alright, are we free? Well, let's see. Yes, we are. Okay, reaction control is okay, not great. Not reaction control, uh, the reaction wheel control. Okay, let me try and manage this a bit. Yeah, it's it's not great control here. It's a good thing that I didn't try and control the entire vehicle with uh, with this reaction wheel. Could 
probably go straight prograde right now. trying to look at both the nav ball and my apoapsis at the same time because I don't want it deviating too much from the prograde vector but I also don't want to pass my target apoapsis okay well I don't know if the amines are throttleable this uh, this little uh, corporal corporal little fellow um, so I don't know about that, but first things first, we need to extend the main antenna so that we can uh, continue to have communication with Mission Control. And we will connect to Mission Control directly because that's the most reliable thing to do. And we're off to, uh, to above the... It's important to be above the, the geostationary Geos, yeah, geostationary uh, orbit height because uh, that uh, we need to be above it to do the data collection, right? Uh, I hope we're gonna be above it for long enough to do all the data collection. All right, uh, we're we're eventually gonna lose communication probably. I mean, unless we're lucky this time. Uh, but let's answer that question. Let's say I plotted here and wanted to get into geostationary orbit. How much would it cost me? Okay, Let, let's have a little bit of buffer, but uh, not too much. That That's good. So that's not exactly geostationary. 1500 and we only have 1261, so tantalizingly close, but not quite. And uh, you can see uh, bringing it in a little bit more doesn't really... it's still got me 1500. So I'll have to expect that uh, burning for geostationary, once you got your apoapsis to the right altitude, costs about 1500. Okay, so we are on our way. We only have the one experiment to do, the sample, so let's get there. Hopefully the world will turn enough in five hours so that we will maintain connection once we're over here. Remember that the, the Communitron isn't able to communicate with uh, these small satellites, these, uh, these little commsats, the TDRS system. Because they'll be too far out. And of course it's your raggedy that's in charge now. What would, who else would be in charge at this point? Right when we needed something. Okay. Okay. This is not a connection that will hold all the way through apoapsis. Okay. Uh, no. We really need the uh, KSC or... Yeah, well it's KSC out of the way to face the apoapsis. Actually, uh, oh right, but they have a 25 kilometer, uh, 25,000 kilometers, so, oh, still, I'm surprised it extends this far. We're already at 31. But, well, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised it's even connected right now. Okay, well, we've just lost it. Uh, I, is this a roll valley or is it direct connection to mission control? Looks like, this looks like it wasn't uh, mission control, no. Um, okay, whoosh. That does look like it's direct to mission control. So we are good there. Are we good to go on experiments? Yes, it's time to do our experiments. So let's decrease time acceleration. And let's activate data recorder.
situation in Space Eye, indeed. Okay, that's our sample. Uh, 150, okay. Lots and lots of data. Well, that's good. More data, more science. 200 science. Okay, uh, high orbital bio studies while in space, high over Kerbin. Preliminary, da preliminary data seems to indicate that all biological samples survived the experiment, but we need to bring that them back to mission control for further review. Well, yeah, let's hope they survive that part. Okay, we don't need the data recorder anymore. All right, now's the tricky part. So, oh, the the reaction was not too bad. Too bad. Oh, actually, if we we don't need to go retrograde to burn. We actually need to go prograde because our periapsis is already too low. So let's go prograde and burn our periapsis out of its predicament. Yeah, and if possible, maybe when we're closer in we can... Let's see, now, there'll be Aurora Valley... Well, they're probably gonna go down to there. They're probably gonna have a whole cycle by the time we get there, so... Um, it might still be raggedy for all I know. Um, yeah. So how about a deceleration burn before we get into the atmosphere? I hear hints that there is a new maneuver node system in the in the new uh, point two four update, and that would be a very nice thing. See what we need is. You tap on your orbit to create a maneuver node, and then this little thing, instead of being on the orbit, would be off to the side here somehow, uh, so that you can manipulate the maneuver. It'll just pop up, and then you can man manipulate the maneuver off to the side instead of it being on this thing. That that at least would be a handy change. So uh, it'll highlight the maneuver that uh, you're looking at somehow. But uh, the real, well, I guess then you can't drag it on here, huh? No, no, of course you could. Uh, whichever one you've highlighted, you can still drag on it. That's that's easy enough. It's just these uh, arrows that can be over off the side. That would be one thing, though perhaps they've got something even better planned. All right, so there's a, there's a maneuver, and there's a maneuver that will keep our periapsis fine while dropping our apoapsis, and it's within our Delta V budget. So, the question is whether we'll be in communication to do said maneuver. Let's find out. Still connected? Sorry it's in the dark. Hope it's not got to be in the dark all the way. Okay. Still connected. Alright. Well, let's do it. And maybe a little bit closer. All right. Shouldn't be strictly necessary to do this burn, but since we have the fuel, it's probably safer to do it. It'll reduce the amount of g-forces that are going to be on the pod that we're returning and that'll increase the probability of survival. Okay, well that's good enough. Alright, so what's our communication situation? Whew, not the greatest place on the planet. Bermuda and Oral Valley is currently in charge, but uh, I'm afraid that Uragadi will be in charge soon enough. Um, I don't have a time to impact here yet, so I don't know how long it'll take before we get to the surface. Alright, but we're oriented retrograde, so that's the first thing. We can get rid of the maneuver. Yeah. 
Okay, let's try and get this so I can see it. Did we need to do anything preliminary? Probably not. Just, uh, in fact, once we ditch this, uh, that antenna will become useless anyway. So it's uh, completely irrelevant. Alright, well, I'm ready to bring it a little bit closer. And I guess... Well, let's check the electric charge on this battery pack. Aha! Haha! Okay. Uh, well, definitely saw that one coming. Alright. Electric charge transfer. It's all about that antenna on the top now, I think. Perhaps the survivability of the parachutes on the side, too. Okay, well we've got our electric charge. Let's ditch the service module. And now we're just our little probe with its data. We really need to be pointing and in retrograde, otherwise stuff will fall off. <laughs> and we won't be able to do stuff. So, let's see. Okay, looks like there's a dawn coming up, so maybe we'll get some light over here. Okay. Stuff flying off there. Oh dear. I wonder if the fact that the battery is on one side will lead to some sort of differential tilt to the whole thing. Well, heat is fine right now. We've got a long way to go, though. We're still going 8,000 meters per second plus. Looking at head-on, doesn't look like there's too much poking out. Probe itself is cool. We're going up. Well, that's not uh, that's not entirely kosher, is it? But I but I think the the atmosphere is enough to bring us down. I don't think uh, it's possible for us to get back into orbit at this point. Perhaps it'll just mean we'll end up in uh, in a brighter side of things. Now the tilt is really worrying me. So we've sort of skipped off of the atmosphere, but but uh, we're probably not gonna go all the way out. I'm on surface velocity. I guess it's fair to go orbital velocity, and you can see. Oh well, there's there's the change of camera that automatically happens when you're when you're in a different sort of situation, and we're probably crashing now. And yeah, we should be. Uh, so far, the antenna on the top is fine, but we've got a long way to go. Long way to go before I pop the parachutes. Connection looks fine. Yeah, Aurora Valley will be in charge for a little bit longer, and certainly longer than they'll take us to move out of position. Okay, we're really getting into it now, and uh, the forces have put a little bit of a spin on my little probe. Still got electric charge, so SAS should be trying to counter this, but it doesn't seem like it's able to. And we have no connection. Oh, crud. What a wonderful time to have no connection. Why do we have no connection? I hate to switch from this screen, but... Uh... No, Aurora Valley is still connected. Bermuda, 
Polar, Madrid. We should still have a connection. G forces are high, but should be survivable for the vehicle. Spin rate is crazy though. Definitely don't like that. Probably due to the battery. Okay, it looks like we're gonna survive re-entry. Let me take a look at the... Con oh wait, something blew up. Uh. Oh, one of the parachutes. Well, I think I somewhat predicted that. That one of them would go off. Alright, still no connection. So why for no connection? We've got electric charge. Oh, now our antenna flew off. Did it uh, give me an F3 on that? No, okay, fine. Alright, so maybe it was... The antenna didn't survive. Alright, so we're going to need another antenna uh, solution, so it was simply that then. Alright, well that makes me feel a little bit better. This, I don't know if this flight computer with custom allows me to pop the parachutes. Uh, or time the popping of the parachutes. It would seem like a little bit cheaty anyway. I should be able to maintain communication properly and thereby release the parachutes. I think that's an important thing to, to figure out. Forget, does this core have an integrated... Oh, it does have an omni range of 30 kilometers. Well, I don't think any of our satellites is going to get within 30 kilometers. Okay, alright, so... Uh, not revert, we'll just go Space Center and go to the VAB. So, what can we do? What can we do? Well, we can use a much larger heat shield. That's really the only solution I can see. Now, we did have... We did have some uh, leftover Delta V. So I can't say that uh, it's not impossible to add something substantial. Let's go for one meter one. We gotta need some more body to this part of the probe in order to fit the other antenna. How heavy is this thing? 0.29. And how heavy was this one? 0.11. So it's not, uh, it's not trivial. Okay, so what we really need is to move this antenna up. Though even it would have had trouble connecting with the with the satellites because it's only got what is what does it have? Five thousand kilometers? Ah that should be fine. Alright, uh tell you what, I think uh my retry of this and perhaps some other shenanigans will uh, will have to take place in a separate episode. So, so yeah, for now, we, we know what we're trying to do. We're just not entirely sure how we're going to do it. And probably... Yeah, let, let, let me uh, configure a rocket, and then next time I'll launch it. And that's because people are going to be starting to do stuff outside my window, and it's going to be very annoying to have all that stuff being audible on the recording. So, let's get a body on here. Right. And now, just one. Uh, let me get it. Well, let's get a longer body. And this is unfortunate, but what we can do is we can shrink the body like so to bring the antenna in. Well, I see at least one parachute that's going to be irritated. But once we pop the parachutes, uh, everything is all kosher anyway. 
so it's not a big deal. It doesn't seem too long in comparison to everything else. Let's get a different texture on it. Mm, let's go... Did I miss the one I wanted? Oh, that's fine. And I don't want this. So, yeah, that's fine too. Okay. Oh, alright. Uh, I'll launch it now. Sheesh. Let's, let's go for it. Alright, so if there is any annoying noise outside my window, I hope you won't mind, but let's let's make sure that tank is empty. Yep, so it's uh, very low mass. And let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's increase the height of this. Alright. Fix staging. Check our delta V. Okay, uh, these stages are still roughly the same. Oh, uh, that's actually burning for a little bit longer than before, wasn't it? I thought it was 7 minutes and 15. Oh, it's because of the way I added the fuel again. Alright, so it's still the same. Um, I guess we can have it for burning for longer. Yeah, I mean, it didn't seem to have any problem with burning for longer, and we probably need uh, extra oomph this time. Let's get to 8 minutes. And let's see about the fact that the tank is not full. I get the feeling I'm gonna be doing... Yeah, let me just go with 8 minutes and 1 second then. Okay, so somewhat different rocket. And oh, this this stage is now all right. Uh, let's make it smaller. That's fine. Okay, let's try this. Yep, uh, I'll call it high toss three. It's substantially different anyway. Off we go. All right, this time I'm gonna see you once we get into. Uh, Orbit. Let, I'll show you a bit of the launch though, but uh, after that I'm just going to jump to orbit. So I'm not going to do any sort of altitude thrust testing or anything like that, okay? So, uh, so yeah, off we go. I want to expedite this as much as possible, and so let's just get there. Hard to see right now. Uh, oh. Yep, a little bit tough to control this whole thing with just that reaction wheel. I'll have to check whether the reaction wheel actually is a mass savings over the reaction control system. Things seem a lot heavier this time for some reason. And I'm going past the target deliberately. Alright, um, though our periapsis is a bit high, but we'll have to burn to fix that. Alright, so... Now, let's see about maintaining connection, right? That's the thing to do at this point. It's just... It has to be direct to mission control. None of the other satellites have the range. Once we... Well, I mean, I thought that none of the other satellites would have the range, and this one, this they put in it definitely shouldn't have... Oh, now, now it drops off. Okay, but uh, so like I said, it should be direct to mission control. Otherwise, we're doomed. There we go. Alright, and our altitude is good, so let's do the experiments. Let's not try and forget the experiments, now that we're all the way out here. And I'll have to remember to transfer electric charge to the top once, 
since that part is necessary. If we do it right now, it'll just deplete the electric charge from the upper battery. Hmm, there is another issue. The fact that the battery is now further away from from the reaction wheel probably means that let me just check okay well we've got our 200 so let's turn this off uh, probably means that it actually has a magnified effect on the on everything so that could be worse let's hope not all right uh, now let's let's fix our periapsis a little bit Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Probably don't have too many lightings of this rocket, but... Alright, actually, since we're at our apoapsis, we should be pointing prograde in order to make sure that we are pointing retrograde on the other side. Let's see... Well... Tough to predict how the orientation will be. I think... Well, we'll just see. What can I do? Let's see. Well, I could replace your agony, but but there's also the issue of all of them being at their periapsis, which would be a problem too. So we don't have as much uh, fuel to burn in terms of slowing down. Not much luck there. Okay, here we go. And they should be heading out to they should be heading out to their apoapsis apoapses as we pass. But will they get there in time? Oh uh Polar is helping. Okay, Polar is helping and Madrid is over the KSC. Uh how long will that last? Oh well, that's good so far. Polar itself might be able to handle everything. Uh, no, uh, once we get to our periapsis it won't. Uh, once we get to our periapsis, it'll have to be Auroral Valley to Bermuda to Polar. Yeah, it'll have to be uh, Auroral Valley to... well, it's already, <laughs> it's already switched over to that sort of situation, except not through Polar, but through Madrid instead. Okay, um, where are we? Ah, nice and bright. So, we've got our antenna here. Hopefully uh, 5,000 kilometers is all it's got. Uh, Roll Valley might be getting a bit high there. Hmm. Oh, so this, this rocket does throttle. Interesting. And that's all we're going to get to do with it. Actually, we've probably left our periapsis too high. Where we might skip off of the atmosphere. That's a problem. Okay, well, anyway, uh, time to ditch the service module. I keep calling it a service module, it's probably not supposed to be called that. But before we do that, battery power. Out. Okay. Off it goes. And hopefully it won't bang into us on the other side. Lots more blade of shielding. We didn't really need that much of blade of shield. Actually, I wonder if uh, I wonder if reducing this actually reduces the mass of it. Would that work? Huh? I should try that. I should try. I and I don't think it. I can. I don't think it's even tweakable. But it would be nice to have it tweakable. Uh, it would be nice to have it uh, tweakable such that uh, reducing the amount of blade of shielding would actually make the thing lighter. 
that would be an interesting thing if it's not already I'll, I'll try uh, I'll try and remember to try it out and yeah that's a thought okay we're going back up and there's no way uh, we're going to be going around the planet huh that's interesting an interesting wrinkle we have enough electric charge for it that's not a problem the satellite configuration that might result is sort of a problem. I have no idea how we're going to connect later on. But then again, maybe we would have lost connection with Aurora Valley anyway. 6,000 kilometers. Uh, I mean, the way that some of the connections have been working, there seems to be a lot of fudge factor with the number. So 25,000 kilometers seem to work all the way up to 30,000 kilometers. But I don't think it's a good idea to rely on that. Okay, here we go again. Oh, no connection. Well, who's in charge? Uh, yeah, well, actually, everybody's at their periapses so nobody's really in charge right now well let's see if the antenna survives at least <laughs> that's the best we can do at this point uh, let's see if uh, everything else survives and then we'll know that uh, if we can get the connection issue worked out we will be alright So we've got a connection to Bermuda, which, oddly enough, is connecting to State Putnik 5. But the connection situation ends there, with Aurora Valley here, and the KSC nowhere in sight. Can't even blame your raggedy on this one. Maybe next time I'll focus on putting a, a satellite in geosync, no geostationary orbit. Just to help things out a bit. And with the satellite we don't need the heat shield and we don't need well mainly the heat shield is a thing that we can drop and also this battery on top and the parachutes and with those mass savings I think we'll get the 300 Delta V that we needed to get into geostationary orbit so so that's that's a plan and so yeah first geostationary satellite maybe next time before trying this experiment again I can see that being a much better mission to tackle. But uh, the problem is the geostationary one won't be able to communicate with any of these satellites. Hmm. There was the other idea of having a satellite uh, within 12,000 kilometers which would be able to communicate with all of the other satellites but be higher and therefore able to patch some of the gaps. That's another idea that's flowing through my mind. So at least one geostationary and then maybe a relay satellite in the middle ground between the geostationary satellite. Well, it have to be at least two satellites in the middle ground between geostationary and uh, well, probably more than that actually. Uh, no, it'd only need to be two if they were in polar orbit. So getting uh, two satellites into polar orbit that will act as relay satellites between the, the existing TDRS satellites and the geostationary satellite above the KSC. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Now I'm just watching to see if miraculously we get a connection on this, in which case we can at least get some uh, science out of it, but I don't think miracles are going to happen this time. Uh, it's tough to say. Line of sight with uh, between... Is it really the high toss probe that's going to be a thing? Well, it does have a battery power and a connection to the KSC if its uh, main dish manages it. It's but it doesn't have a secondary antenna, I thought. I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen in time.
What the heck is going on with my probe? Uh, I guess SAS doesn't work very well when you're not connected. Best explanation I can figure out. Okay, yeah, so now we can blame you, Raggedy. There is a non-existent chance for that one. Oh, this high toss probe is way out there. Gonna have to call some of that space junk and get it out of sight. All right, utter destruction. All right, so, so next time I think the priority has to be to fix up the satellite network, replace your raggedy. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I give up. We're gonna replace your raggedy. We're going to add a geostationary satellite. I think that's th those are the priorities. All right, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.